For some reason, the trend of porting mobile games to home console always strikes me as a little bit odd. Generally, games designed with mobiles in mind lose more in translation when leaping onto a big screen than when the likes of, say, Bully is ported into your hand. And in addition to porting a 5 inch size resolution onto a 48 inch plasma, mapping simplistic swipe gestures to an analog stick while working decently well never quite has the same satisfying feeling and can be prone to error. Lara Croft Go is sort of an exception to that rule, purely because the quality of the game manages to stand on its own merits. And it's not your traditional mobile game where you're cutting a rope or you're slingshotting a bird into a destructible building. It's about logical thinking and timing. Because of that, you're able to look past some of the technical shortcomings that come along with it because the style of play is better suited. For instance, the juttery frame rate and the grueling loading screens that seem to hamper the game throughout. And at first I thought it might have been something to do with the trophy synchronization as there's often an extended time delay when you find a collectible before it slops into the transparent shape or jewel to add to your collection. And while game sent a notification notifications would have been rooted into the engine, the way PlayStation tracks these is different and more complex. However, after some playing around with the Vita version, I realised that it's actually the cross-save functionality and it's a lot worse on Sony's handheld. When played next to the mobile version, which is practically seamless, you really notice the limitations of the port and the price you have to pay for maintaining your progress between the two formats. A similar issue occurred with Hitman Go, except you could choose to take advantage of cross-save, whereas it just seems embedded into Lara Croft Go. And I'm kind of both surprised and disappointed to see similar issues make a comeback here and actually be worse. And as aforementioned, the control scheme definitely throws up a chair of frustrations. Unusually, Square Enix Montreal have opted not to use the PS4 trackpad for taps and swipes. You can't even use the D-pad for timed precision. Lara's movements are fully governed by the left analog stick, with the right used to hunt for collectibles hidden around the environment. And for the most part, the right stick works well, though you will sometimes need to place it dead center on the object you're tracking, otherwise it won't log. The left stick, however, will be a love-hate relationship throughout. One moment you feel like you're attuned to the rhythm, able to get around free and easy, the next it's taking too long to register your movements, or you're not facing the right way to throw a javelin or move a pillar and have to take long ways around. It's times like these when you long for that decisive tap. When solving puzzles you'll have these genuine eureka moments that bring a smile to your face, but then you accidentally send Lara one step too far with an inadvertent flick of the stick and it causes insta death. Each area has various turn based puzzles, sometimes you'll need to hold down a switch to activate various platforms, sometimes you'll need to dangle from a ledge to escape an enemy, and sometimes you'll have to avoid stepping on a crack in the floor or you'll be sent sailing into an abyss. Lara is usually being chased by a big bad or she's in search of an ancient relic, but unlike previous Tomb Raider games the story isn't the focal point of this experience. Unlike the previously released Hitman Go, it feels like a less static board game and more of a fluid, dynamic and action-packed romp. Almost a perfect match for the genre. Comparatively, it's also a lot more fun, but unusually for a mobile port, that about sums up the criticism because the engine has ported across to the big screens extremely well. In fact, seeing the refracting light beams and beautifully drawn landscapes in full view can occasionally be quite breathtaking, and watching Lara slink around the course or enemies imposingly doing the same thing is really silky smooth. There is a reason Lara Croft Go has won award after award, constantly being heaped with praise. It may not be as jaw-droppingly stunning to watch as Rise of the Tomb Raider, but it's genuinely a great game. And just in comparison to everything that's happening on the mobile scene, but across the board. And while Deus Ex Go has also proven to be a formidable addition to Square Enix Montreal's roadmap, this unquestionably remains their crown jewel. It's not a perfect port, and you may even prefer to stick with your tablet, but the additional chapter, which is equal measures formidable and fantastic, coupled with the cross-buy and the cross-save opportunities, as well as seeing the game play out on a big screen might make you reconsider that double dip. If I did have a wish list, apart from the fixes for the highlighted issues, I also would have loved the quick restart button, the likes which you'll find in Trials and Steep. Some puzzles will require multiple attempts to get right, and occasionally you'll find that you made a wrong move, meaning you can't complete the section anyway. And this would have cut out the start, menu, restart button routine, or forcing a character death where it isn't needed. But on the whole, this is a game that deserves to be played. And if you somehow not managed to get around to it yet, this is currently the definitive edition of a classic with an exclusive chapter. The only problem is it's bogged down with some technical hiccups and some rebellious controls. Just a quick note on the Vita version, the loading and saving is awful on Vita at the moment. Lara Croft Go is supposed to be filled with rapid fire quick succession levels, but instead the Vita version is getting bogged down by trying to talk to the PS4 all the time. There's no clear way to turn the functionality off either. One quick glance at the mobile version you'll see the difference is really is night and day. Square Enix Montreal really need to give this a second look.
The good news is that you can alternate between touch and analog control seamlessly and that makes you feel in control of the game like never before. It looks and feels great with Vita's screen really doing the visuals justice. So yeah, I really enjoy playing Lara Croft Go on Vita, I just didn't appreciate all the wasted time in between. So to summarise, the pros, the game looks surprisingly beautiful on the big screen, it is still fantastic to play, additional chapter adds even more value and the cross buy with Vita is a pretty sweet deal. But on the con side, the cross save with Vita is really painfully slow and probably not worth the effort, control issues with PS4 version and there's no use of a touchpad which is a bit bizarre and it could have used an insta restart button. But on the whole, I really did enjoy Lara Croft Go, it's great to see it on playstation 4 and vita and uh, if you haven't checked it out yet you definitely should do that thank you for watching don't forget to like comment and subscribe see you next time